So I've had a week to sink my teeth into Starfield now, and I have been absolutely enthralled. It is an absolutely phenomenal game. I love every moment of it that I've had so far, and I am looking forward to months and months and hopefully years of sinking my teeth into the stars. Um, but it is time to have a discussion about Starfield versus Baldur's Gate 3, because I think it's important, because my channel is made up of a lot of different things, but recently we have been heavily focused on Baldur's Gate 3. Now we're heavily leaning into Starfield and balancing these two games, and eventually we're going to be adding Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty into the mix at the end of September, but that's a then problem, not a now problem. <laughs> so I'll deal with the time limitations when we get to them. But... Let's just talk about what I think about Starfield so far and how it compares against Baldur's Gate 3. First and foremost, I am getting equal amounts of enjoyment out of these two games. Equal amounts. Starfield is scratching an itch that no other game has been able to scratch for me in terms of a science fiction, life sim, space exploration game. I'm loving it. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 is providing me with that CRPG itch being scratched in a way that no other game since Baldur's Gate 2 has been able to do. It finally took the crown from Baldur's Gate 2 as the best CRPG I've ever played. And I've played a lot of CRPGs that have been really, really good, but Baldur's Gate 3 is next level. Do I compare these two games to each other? Nope, I do not, because they are completely different games, completely different experiences. This game does something completely different than this game, and this game does something completely different than this game. I don't complain about the art style being different, because to me, it doesn't matter. I want these two games to look different. I don't need Starfield to look like Baldur's Gate 3, nor do I need Baldur's Gate 3 to look like Starfield. I am absolutely content with the way that these games look and feel different to each other. I'm also very happy that I have another game that I can play on the Xbox Series X. And as soon as Baldur's Gate 3 becomes available on the Series X, I will then be playing this on Series X exclusively as opposed to on the PC. I just don't really care for PC gaming anymore. I do not like using mouse and keyboard. Um, I've got tendonitis. I'm old. I've got just issues with my hands and wrists. And playing on a mouse and keyboard for 25 years in MMOs and everything else I've done has taken its toll. It's no different than playing guitar or anything else. Eventually, you're going to see some some issues. Um, so I much prefer the controller in, in my age these days because it works. And when it's done right, as like what with what Baldur's Gate 3 has done with their controller support, I've been... Uh, in the beginning when this game launched, I was playing about 85% controller, 15% mouse and keyboard still, but now I'm about 99% exclusive. And as soon as I switch over to the Xbox, I'll be controller exclusive. And the controls on Starfield have been absolutely amazing. Um, I have really been taking the time to explore all the things in Starfield. And one of the things that I think is very well done is... I'm 40-ish hours in. I've been playing for a week. And you've already seen, like, literally within the first 48 hours, there were already people who were like, I'm done. I beat the game. I'm on a new game plus. And I'm like, you do you. Um, I'm going to be 200, 300 hours into Starfield before I beat the game. I'm 40 hours in. I haven't done anything other than, in terms of main quest stuff, I did a little bit of the Constellation quest to get... Barrett unlocked because I knew I wanted a companion that was not going to have an issue with me sneaking around and lockpicking and stuff and doing some slightly shady things. Um, but um, as soon as I unlocked Barrett, I have then since just completely ignored every single main quest in the game. I've not done any main quests. I've not done any main faction quests. I've not done any main missions. I have done activities nearly exclusively and side missions and uh, the, the missions you can get from the mission board, like taking out pirates and um, going into doing space cargo runs and being a space trucker. Perfect example was this morning, um, I had a, I had a um, go kill a pirate on this planet mission. And I went there, and sometimes, excuse me, sometimes it's just like a quick kill three or four ships in space, but sometimes they want you to dock and explore a location. And this was one of those that was a dock and explore the location. And it turned out we were at like this secret um, science facility. And there was a bunch of other stuff going on if you read the notes that we were going through. So um, I'm going through, um, I took, it took me two hours 
two hours just to do a mission board quest to go take out a pirate. Now, not all of them are two hours like this. Some of them are quick little 30 minute runs. Some of them I've done in as quick as 15 minutes, just go kill a couple pirates. Um, but the amount of activities is simply amazing. And I still haven't explored hardly any of that game. I still haven't even finished surveying my first planet. I finally made my way to Neon the other day, and all I did was go check in with a quest, and then I immediately left and was like, I'm saving that for later. I haven't been to the main base for the Freestar Collective yet. I haven't been to Earth, you know, haven't been to the moon. Like, all I've been doing is just side missions. I'm like, I think I'm level 15 now. Um, and, and not side missions, but just activities. I'm just going out and exploring and finding things to do. And what's really amazing to me about Starfield is that the way the procedural generation works... Um, I love, I love the way it works. Um, I am not hold up or held up by this belief that it needs to be like No Man's Sky. I hated No Man's Sky. I just didn't like it. I tried three times to play No Man's Sky. Hated the fact that there were like no main missions, no storyline. I'm just what flying a ship through an empty planet. That's boring as hell to me. Survival games. I fucking hate survival games. I like Bethesda games because it gives me RPG elements. I get skill trees. I get dialogue. I get companions. Those are all the things that I love about Bethesda games. And Starfield is giving me all of those things, on top of which I have space exploration and I can go explore planets. And I don't care that it's procedural. I don't care. I'm having fun doing it. You, the anti-Bethesda trolls of the world, do not get to dictate what I call fun and what i call game of the year for me starfield is a contender right now for game of the year but Baldur's gate also is and if i went with my gut my gut reaction is to say that Baldur's gate 3 is probably going to take my game of the year position um if i really had to choose between these two and thankfully i don't think i'm going to choose between these two I, i'm pretty sure and I, i'm going to wait until later in the year to make this call but i think what's going to happen is i'm going to for the first time ever consider two different games my games of the year and they're going to be tied for first place and if phantom liberty ends up delivering on that cyberpunk 2.0 promise that it looks like it's about to deliver on i may have three games in that category vying or sharing that first place slot there's nothing wrong with that like the, the fact that there are three amazing games that provided me with enough enjoyment to consider them games of the year is mind-boggling. Because most years, it's usually one clear contender. It's like one game stands about above all the rest. And this year, I've got multiple titles that are, you know, jockeying for that position. It's simply an amazing time to be a gamer. Now, Baldur's Gate 3 gives me a completely different set of experiences that I am absolutely in love with. Someone asked me yesterday, uh, it might have been this morning actually, when I'm recording this, uh, it was up early drinking coffee, and someone left a comment that said, um, do you think Starfield is ever going to give you that emotional reaction you had when you discovered the night song during the live stream in Baldur's Gate 3? And I replied, because I knew what they were they were getting at, is that Starfield's not as good a good game as Baldur's Gate 3 because it doesn't have those emotionally impactful moments. And I responded back with, it doesn't have to have those emotionally impactful moments because Starfield is scratching an itch that Baldur's Gate 3 can't, which is space exploration and an RPG in space and a science fiction RPG. Like all of those things are things that I deeply love. And Baldur's Gate 3 can't scratch those itches. On the flip side, Starfield cannot scratch the same itch that I have with Baldur's Gate 3 for being able to feel an emotional connection with my companion characters because I in my opinion, and this is only an opinion, I like the characters so far. I haven't explored all of the companion characters in Starfield yet, but I have a deep personal connection to uh, Shadowheart and Lazale in my party. And some of that may be colored by the fact that I spent three years in early access with these characters, and so I've grown to love them over time. Whereas Starfield, I'm only one week into learning about these people because they both have great voice actors. They both they both have good mocap. They both have it's different art styles, but they both have great character models. Um, there is nothing in here that's different other than the fact that I played this game for three years in early access and I played this game for one month, one week, excuse me. So, um, what's up? 
Um, so if I look at the 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 two of these two games side by side, both of them are phenomenal titles. I'm having a lot of fun in both of them. And if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm spending the rest of this year and probably the bulk of next year playing Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield and weaving in Cyberpunk 2077 and then weaving in, you know, uh, Jedi Outlaws next year and Avowed whenever that drops from Obsidian. But um, these are not games that I play and then shelve. Like Jedi Survivor, I loved it. It was a great follow-up to Jedi Fallen Order. Played it removed it from my xbox will i play it again probably at some point down the road but i did not feel the need to immediately turn around and play that again because it was a very linear 50 hour experience and i was one and done baldur's gate 3 and starfield are both giving me replayability which not every game can provide me with in the past i've stuck with mmos because mmos for the past 20 years or so have given me the replayability that a lot of single player games aren't capable of delivering. And then suddenly here we are with next gen consoles and, you know, 2023 and we have games that have come out now that are providing us with that MMO level of go back and do it again and get something completely different. Um, and both of these games do that equally well. I've already got a couple of different playthroughs in the early stages of Starfield, and there is just as much diversity in things as there is with Baldur's Gate 3 based on a lot of different factors, such as um, I, I mean, there are some, the first, you know, 30 minutes or so, let's say the intro section of Starfield, it's very much on the path, but once you've done character creation and you get off that planet, um, and you do that first mission, which unlocks the ship and everything else, you can go anywhere you want to go. You are not locked into any given path. And depending on what skills you've taken, there's not only the game itself, excuse me, but there's also the outpost building and the weapon stuff and the research, the crafting. And Quick commercial break, everyone, to give a shout out to our first official guild officer, Bubblonia, as well as all of the guild champions and, of course, all of the members who help keep me on the air full time. To join as a member, simply click that join button below and pick your tier, but you can also support with super chats on any live stream or premiere or super thanks on any upload or YouTube short. Don't forget the Discord. Let's get back to the video. The sim element of that game, which Baldur's Gate 3 does not have. Baldur's Gate 3 does not have that simulator environment, that life simulator environment. But Baldur's Gate 3 also has an insane amount of replayability because of all of the focus they put on providing the permutations and the alternatives to conversations based upon, you know, who you have in your party and combat scenarios being different based on did you win the conversation? Who did you bring with you? Did you kill this guy over here? Did you bring that person? Did you did you not kill that person? There's so much going on in both of these games that provide, in my mind, a nearly infinite level of repeatability. And we haven't even started talking about mod support, which both of these games have. So the idea that not only are we going to get a two to three hundred experience out of Starfield and a two to three hundred ex hour experience out of Baldur's Gate 3 for our first playthroughs, those of us who are completionists, I'm not in a rush. I'm not trying to complete Baldur's Gate 3 in 30 hours. I'm not trying to complete Starfield in 30 hours to get to New Game Plus. I am sinking my teeth into these games. I am ruminating. I am chewing my cud and taking my time. I am revisiting planets. I am doing all the companion quests. I'm flying and exploring. I'm surveying planets which is super fun, but also time consuming. Like I've got 10 hours just in one planet trying to get it surveyed and I'm only like 62% into it. Like it takes a ton of effort and time to do some of the things in Starfield and I love it. And the fact that I could just get in my ship and just fly and go anywhere I want to go in a massive galaxy speaks volumes to me because I can't do that in Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is a very contained sandbox in the sense that yeah, a couple hundred, 300 hours worth of entertainment here, but you still have some hard edges in the sense that there's not a thousand planets, you know, and, and somebody's immediately going to go, yeah, but those planets are devoid of life and meh. Not, no, they're not. You just don't want to play the game that is associated with the exploration and outpost building on planets. Like, that's a whole nother world for some people. It's not for everyone. I'm certainly not going to explore every single planet in that galaxy, but you can damn well bet that I'm probably going to go explore 40 or 50 of them, and I'm going to build a dozen outposts over the next year and set up my own little structure of me being, you know, 
megalomaniac empire dude running my own systems of planets and I'm going to do all those things. I can't wait. And then I pre the premium edition, so whenever that DLC comes down the line, I'll be happy to play that as well. Um, and with Baldur's Gate 3, I've already got five playthroughs happening. Like, But I've also got a three-year head start with Baldur's Gate 3. I, I just started Starfield. And I can already tell you that based on what I've seen so far in the first week of this game being live, it is going to provide me with an equal amount of entertainment to what Baldur's Gate 3 is providing for me. You don't have to agree. You don't. I know that not everyone is enjoying Starfield as much as they are Baldur's Gate. That's okay. That's fine. Somebody made the comment the other day that they were um, waiting on... Um, I can't remember. Oh, it was uh, Spider-Man 2, I think. And they were like, Spider-Man 2 is going to knock Baldur's, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 off the throne. And I was like, man, that's awesome that you feel that way. I don't feel that way. I like Spider-Man games, but they are not nearly, for me, as good of an experience as what these play because those are more of linear, the linear games like God of War and, and, and Jedi Survivor where you get, you know, 50-ish hours out of a linear storyline. Yeah, there's lots of side activities. You kind of like an Assassin's Creed game, but it's not the same level of I don't have companions. I don't have... You know what I mean? Like, that's not happening. And both of these games do all of the things that I love from a gamer perspective. I get rich companions, fun storylines, lots of quirky dialogue, great voice acting, some good mocap. Um, the the scenes, the cut scenes in these two games, it's a little different. This game has really character-driven cut scenes, and this game has more of the cutscenes related to space flight and space exploration. But I just, I love it when I like go AFK for a couple of minutes and I come back and like my, I'm, I'm like doing a 360 around my characters or my ships or something in Starfield. Cause it's just like, Oh yeah, I got, I worked for that. Like, yeah. Look how many hours I put into getting that. It feels good. Um, so for me, Starfield and Baldur's Gate three are equally good and they are providing me with in for me, they are both Game of the Year contenders. And I'm going to tell you right now, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm pretty sure by the time we get done with both of these, I'm going to put them both together as a tie for Game of the Year. Because I really can't choose between the two because for me, they are both scratching itches that I have that no other game can scratch. Um, I just don't I don't agree with people who say that Elite Dangerous is a better game than Starfield. I've played Elite Dangerous. I got bored very quickly. I tried it two different times with the PlayStation 4. Didn't care for it. The reason is I don't want to manually dock my ship. I just don't. I don't want to have a big open space with nothing to do unless I figure it out. Like, I want quests. I want missions. I need a path for me to follow. I want to consume quest content and storyline, and I need to be involved in a story. Um, similarly, No Man's Sky, because it doesn't have any of that. Um, yeah, and they've added some stories over the years, but it's just the survival element, needing to eat, and, 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 yeah, there is some of that here in the sense that the plants can be a little harsh and your suits can help you, but it's not quite the same thing. And at the end of the day, you know, like I've said a couple times here, no other games are scratching the itches that these two can, and so for me... I'm on board for both of them, and soon Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty is going to be here, and I can't wait to sink my teeth into that as well, because I loved Cyberpunk the first time through, but I played it on the PS4 Slim, which was not a fun experience. <laughs> Although it was a great game, it still was a buggy hot mess. Um, anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, I've been having a great time with both these games. For the most part, I feel like people are, you know, the the intelligent gamers out there are, are willing to look at both these games objectively and say, all right, look, they're both great games. They both have some bugs. They both have some performance issues on the PC. They both have some flaws. But those flaws and bugs do not take away from these games being really, really epic at their core. For me, I'm being entertained by both of these. I can't wait to play more. Hopefully you're enjoying. If you are, drop those comments down below. Feel free to discuss things um, politely, civilly. You'll know if you're not being civil because the comment will disappear. But otherwise, um, have fun in the comments below. Be polite to each other. Let's enjoy these games, everybody. There's some really cool stuff out there to explore, whether it's fantasy, whether it's science fiction. Cyberpunk coming around the corner. If you like the way I do things here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Stick around.
we got more stuff coming in the pipeline. Daily streams at 11 a.m. Don't forget the Discord. Links are down below. Till then, stay safe, everybody. Happy gaming.